Okay, everybody. Um, yeah, usually I'm talking about something I do, answering questions. Today I'm going to tell you what you folks told me because uh, we did a survey, as is uh, customary with Rust projects, it seems. And um, yeah, so we also did a survey first for those who do not know what Clippy is. Um, it's a project to create a number of lints for the Rust language. Uh, for those who don't know what a lint is, it's basically a piece of static analysis software that will look for patterns in your code that are, for whatever reason, problematic. And as you can see, we have a good number of them. So the current number is 152. Um, yeah, so we check a lot of stuff. And so, let's see what people answered. First, of those who answered, which are, as of now, 95 responses came in, and about two-thirds of them actually use Clippy, or have used Clippy in the past. Of those two-thirds, it's around 50-50, either use Cargo Clippy or a dependency, optional dependency in their project. Uh, yeah, question. Of course. What does it mean, cargo clipping? What is the difference? Can you repeat? So the question was, what is the difference uh, between cargo clippy and an optional dependency? Um, cargo is, as most of you know, the package manager for Rust, and it supports subcommands. So you can install a binary into a, a path that is then called by Cargo on the project. And we have created such a subcommand. You can install, if you install Clippy, as of now, uh, you will be able to just type Cargo Clippy on your console, and then it will run Clippy on your project. And um, you can also use Clippy as, in as a dependency of your project. And then, or as an optional dependency, which you can activate with a feature flag that you will have to put in at uh, uh, the, the cargo startup. And yeah, that's basically the two options of using it. There are also some um, more complicated incantations you can use to uh, run a Clippy somewhere on some code, but that's basically the, the two ways of running it. So either you just tell it, run it, don't matter, don't worry about the code, or you have it in the code and it gets run anyway, or by feature. Okay. So then we asked about what lints are most problematic. So the most problematic lint at that time was new without default, which uh, I can tell you is now fixed. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy about that. Uh, I did some of the fixing myself. Um, one of the problems was that um, Clippy asked people to uh, implement def the default trait for types they only use internally. And those default implementations don't give them any value. So uh, I restricted it to public items. Uh, also, there was one who said, well, my new method has side effects. If it was any of you, please rename your method, please. <laughs> Yeah, also some people had problems with cyclomatic complexity. Well, that's a word, but I always get it not in my tongue. Um, which basically warns about methods that get too large, too big, too complex to navigate. And, uh, well, some people have problems with that. Apparently, they're writing very complex methods. Yeah, we're not fixing that. If you have problems with that, you can simply allow it. Then uh, we asked about favorites. Uh, there was no clear winner. Everyone has their beloved lint or their most hated lint, I don't know. They didn't tell us that, but I guess since two thirds use Clippy, we should be okay. Um, then I asked what is your biggest wish for Clippy? And the biggest wish for most people was quick fix functionality or um, a functionality to apply the suggestions by Clippy directly to their code, which is 
to say the least, a bit complicated. But um, yeah, we're working on it. Uh, I also uh, started a discussion with John Turner uh, over Twitter and Stack Overflow and IRC. And yeah, basically, we're on it. <laughs> uh, also, people asked about Clippy on Stable, which obviously won't fly this year because uh, this is a compiler plugin which uses the high level internal representation HIR, which is, uh, yeah, apart from MIR, the medium level intermediate representation, the most unstable thing you can think of. So um, I guess I, I'm not sure if it, we will see a stabilized uh, Clippy before the end of the decade. Anyway, there is now Rust Up, which is a great tool you can use to have multiple Rust tool chains. You just go to rustup.rs and follow this, uh, the instructions, and then you get an option of installing a nightly Clippy, a stable Clippy, and whatever Clippy you want. Uh, not Clippy, pardon. Rust plus cargo tool chains side by side. You also can manage cross compilers with that and stuff. It's really awesome. And if you don't have it, you should grab it now. Uh, there's an open Wi-Fi here. You can, uh, well, OK. So that's about RustUp. And um, yeah, then we had a question number six. There is no question six. And yeah, it was simple. It was you just had to click got it. And then there's some people. And it's pre-selected, by the way. So it's really hard to not answer it. But some people did anyway. I have no idea how or why. But uh, yeah, that's how it is. And that's basically everything people told us. So this gets, is a really short talk. And uh, thanks to everyone who answered the survey. And I also want to uh, make some advertisement. Uh, we'll have our Rhein-Main Rust Regulars table June 17th at the tech store in Frankfurt. It's a really nice restaurant. So uh, if anyone is in the Frankfurt area during that time, we'll be happy to meet you there. Yeah, there's a question. Um, so wait, is it closed or will it be continued? It's still open, but I think I'll okay. close it soon. Okay. Any other questions? Or um, are there still plans to expand this? Like are there still a few um, open links that you're working on that you want to A few. About? Um, really exciting ones, like <laughs> yeah, another. So I guess around a third of those 195 issues are um, suggestions to improve existing lens or real, real bugs that we'll have to fix, like false positives or false negatives. Um, or bad suggestions, stuff like that. And the rest are lints we haven't come around to write yet. So, um, yeah, I think about 120, 130 lints we haven't written yet. And these are only the things we have thought out about for now. Uh, the search space for possible lints is, yeah, pretty much out there. <laughs> Yes. I, I'm sorry, I missed, the, I missed the beginning, so I don't know if um, you guys mentioned this. Um, it seems, just from the end, that it's pretty difficult to write, and that more like the compiler internal people will be writing these. Are you guys planning on making the platform to integrate lens more uh, accessible so that people can write their own sort of checks for projects yeah. specific rules or things like that? Or is it supposed to be a high level? The question was if we could make it easier to write custom lints. And actually, I have thought about that. We, we have, I think, one or two issues even on the issue tracker um, because there are um, projects for other languages. I'm thinking about PMD, for example, which use a, um, something like a um, structured uh, description language for lint that then gets compiled into those uh, yeah, methods to actually do the linting. And um, we are thinking about that, but it's since the interface we're working against is quite unstable, 
we have uh, so much to do just keeping up the current lens and writing a few new ones that will get us quick gains. So I think this is a medium to long-term project. Yeah. But that's not the, is it because I missed the beginning, that's not the intention of the project that every moron can write little rule checkers for their own project? Well, you can. It's, it's supposed to be a high level thing for... Um, uh, okay, I've, uh, since you've missed it, um, the first Rust code I wrote was the equal operands lint for Clippy. So it's not too hard. It was the first piece of Rust code I wrote and it wasn't, it was really easy. So it's, it's a bit wordy, the interface. You'll have to wrap your head around this, um, this syntax trees. But once you've done that, uh, it's a piece of cake. <laughs> Clippy basically is an extension to the existing lints in the Rust compiler, which already has a couple of lints. So it's, you basically, everything that's, that might be too specific for the Rust compiler itself, mm -hmm. basically, as I said, probably has a place in Clippy. Yeah, also, the good thing is that we can develop Clippy apart from Rust C, so we don't get those half an hour compile times which is really speeding up the project. <laughs> so we have, I think, about uh, two or three minutes now if, you, if we do all tests, so that's still workable. And if you do a specific test, it's even faster. It's a, a matter of a few seconds. So it's much more about turnaround times than, yeah, having it in, in Rust-C. And uh, the other thing is if we make it more complex by having some Pre-compilation steps or so, also development will get slower because the, some code has to compile this stuff, and yeah, this will increase our turnaround time actually. So you have 152 lints right now, if I recall correctly. Yep. Uh, do you plan to split those up into uh, smaller groups? <sighs> This is a bit difficult for me to decide because there are so many different groupings we could have. For example, okay, those are probably readability lins, those are performance lins, those are security, security or um, misleading code lins or whatever. But the thing is, those um, categories are not as clear cut as you would make it out to be. So. Um, yeah, I think if someone wants to come around and um, <laughs> tell us a possible categorization, we'll be all for it and discuss it. But so far, most of us have been more happy with writing more lins uh, than to um, yeah, put them in separate drawers. <laughs> Do you have the questions on tape? Or do we have to shake the table for Any other questions? Okay, then thanks to folks.